that's what's more fun for me. I spent most of my life as Colin Farrell is the charming Irishman who's built up a huge resume in Hollywood in a very short space of time. He always seems to work with a big star or a renowned filmmaker. And his acting ability combined with that rambunctious nature means that he can easily jump from big blockbuster to indie flick. But his modest upbringings in Dublin meant his life hasn't always been so easy. Farrell was a loose cannon throughout his youth, getting in trouble at various schools before he was eventually expelled at 17 for punching a supervisor. With his premature exit from his education, Colin set out on a myriad of events, including a gap year in Australia, teaching line dancing throughout Ireland, and unsuccessfully trying out for a position in boy band, Boyzone. Amongst these experiences, Farrell found a passion for acting. He worked on several local stage and television productions before deciding to branch out and move to London for a role in the play A Little World of Our Own. It was here that destiny played a hand. Whilst on stage, Colin was noticed by Kevin Spacey, who instantly admired his ability. They quickly became friends and Spacey introduced Colin to the producers of Ordinary Decent Criminals, who cast him in the film immediately. Keen to make the most of his success, Colin went off to Hollywood to tout for further big screen roles. He made the right decision because director Joel Schumacher decided to tap into young Farrell's talent by casting him as a Vietnam recruit in the war film Tigerland. With his foot in the door and career prospects looking bright, the question is, did Colin feel he'd changed after working in Hollywood? Not really, no, I'm just, you know, I'm still just, I feel the same as I ever did. I'm just doing the work, you know, trying to keep the head down and focus and, and do the best job I can on whatever I'm working on. Thank God I'm working, you know, I'm in a good position. But, you know, it's just a lot of luck, it could be anyone, honest to God. You know, I just had a lot of luck thrown my way. <laughs> now a rising star, Colin began a string of prestigious, high-profile projects including playing Jesse James in American Outlaws and Hearts War, a prison camp drama starring Bruce Willis. But Farrell really hit the mainstream, co-starring opposite Tom Cruise in the Steven Spielberg-directed Minority Report. Colin plays a hard-nosed cop in a futuristic pre-crime unit who pursues his former rival, Cruise, after he becomes the number one suspect for an impending murder. But Farrell was still a bit green on set, struggling to deal with the star power of Cruz and Spielberg. One of the first things I did was with Cruz and him behind the monitor, and I completely forgot that at some stage in that day, I was going to have to look into Tom Cruise's eyes while Steven Spielberg shouted action. I swear to God, I should have worn my brown pants. I nearly died and I had a meltdown, and uh, I did many takes. But, but that was nothing to do with him. Someone like him has the power to really message you if they want. You know, just the smallest thing, someone like me that comes in, you know, and he was, he's just so open and he, sees, he seems to see the world while being very incredibly smart through a child's eyes, you know, and he gets so excited about ideas and even if it's one of my ideas and it's mediocre at best, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's good, try that, try that. And obviously he has a plethora of ideas and plans of his own. 2003 was the most prolific year for Colin Farrell. He starred in five feature films, most notably The Recruit. It was him up against Al Pacino who went on record stating Farrell was the best actor of his generation. That kid is, I mean, he is the greatest. He's, he's the, the, just, you know, we all know that you go in there and you do your thing and you, you're, someone, you're under conditions that are, are, are a little less than comfortable, which is the way it should be. I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're doing a job and you're out there working. And to be with someone like him and Roger, and people you really like and you look forward to seeing every day because you you know you you get on with them it, it's it's uh it makes the job doable colin had proven to be quite the people person but it was no biggie to transform into a comic book villain in daredevil losing his hair and adopting a scar on his forehead colin became the over-the-top killer bullseye for what the film lacked in substance, it made up for in entertainment. But what did Colin think the target audience should get out of this blockbuster? Entertained, hopefully. You know, to the max, they should be really entertained. It's, it's not a challenging piece. It doesn't have anything to say about society or the government or the world we live in or the Big Brother complex. It's just, you know, the thing that some people would say cinema was invented for, some would disagree, but it's, it's something that, it, it's definitely an important part of cinema. It's about going into a dark room with 250 strangers, 300 strangers, and 
you know, getting whisked away for two hours. Everybody needs a bit of escapism. And what better way to do it than dye your hair blonde and become history's most successful commander, Alexander the Great. Unfortunately, it was only a temporary fix because in reality, the film Alexander had all the ingredients to make a great movie, such a brilliant director, a star-studded cast and exciting historical story. But it just fell short and was panned by the critics. Never mind though, Farrell was happy enough to be working alongside actors of such calibre as Angelina Jolie. It's just great to play with people. I, I start off in television, so I, I got used to hitting my marks every time, saying things the same way and you move on. But then you, you find actors like Angelina who mixes it up every time, changes every time, evolves every time. That's not conscious, it just happens, it just, it just begins to breathe, you know, the scene. And um, so to bounce off, that was just amazing. It was just amazing. Colin must have been paying attention because his most praised work was still ahead of him. Starring in the black comedy In Bruges garnered him a lot of award attention and earned him a Golden Globe for his efforts. The script's colourful dialogue contrasted against the bleak but fairy tale like scenery of Bruges, and Colin hit every comedic and emotional beat during his performance as the regretful hitman. Farrell believed in the script so much that in the beginning he didn't want to spoil the film by attaching his name to it. Uh, what was my reaction? Yeah, just I laughed a lot and then just put it down and called me agent and said whatever I have to do to be part of it. And I met Martin in New York and I originally tried to talk him out of casting me by telling him we should cast unknowns, to which my agent went, what the f did you say that for? Um, but I did, I thought that he should, it was such a strong piece and it was so pure that I thought it might be better for the audience to not have any relationship with any of the actors on screen. But uh, thankfully Martin thought that was a load of hogwash and cast me and uh, that was it. Colin was lucky enough to keep his thick Irish accent for In Bruges, but for the majority of his film career, Farrell's had to assume an American accent. In the film The Way Back, Colin took on a new vocal challenge, a Russian accent, playing the convict Valka, who escaped from a gulag during World War II. This accent was a different experience, proving to be a crucial element to Farrell's character acting. But I just found the Russian language and the Russian accent are my version of feeling that in my mouth changed everything physically, the way I moved, or the way I held myself, my expressions and everything really unconsciously just kind of all began to click. One thing Colin Farrell is renowned for is, let's call it his own brand of colourful dialect. Letting the odd expletive slip out in an interview is not uncommon for Colin Farrell. So with his swear jar full of cash, does he even realise that he's casually cursing? Uh, am I generally aware when I'm swearing? Uh, certainly always after the fact. Uh, maybe midway through a word. Maybe CK, I'm aware, but FU kind of slips by me. <laughs> I did it a bit dyslexic there, I realised, but... A potty mouth was the least of Colin's troubles in the tabloids. As a young star in Hollywood, Farrell lived his life to the fullest in a whirlwind of alcohol, drugs and sexual escapades. He endured all of the stereotypes, such as a lightning-fast marriage, a sex tape and a celebrity stalker case. Interestingly enough, Colin's always remained incredibly honest about his private life, which seems to have worked in his favour. Clean and sober, Colin continued to work hard at his profession, which grabbed the attention of Peter Weir, director of The Way Back. I think Colin, uh, like all young, virile people, has a period or, uh, of wildness, and he had such a period. Um, now, he said to me when we were working, he said, I'm putting it now all into my work, all the wildness, and so the kind of energy you see in his performance is because it was not dissipated the night before. And a full tank of gas is exactly what Farrell needed for the comedy Horrible Bosses. In this supporting role, Colin transformed into Bobby Pellet, stripped away every Farrell-esque element to become the most agitating, bigoted boss imaginable. Through the years, I just haven't found that many of them very funny, and this was, yeah, it was kind of crass, and it was without apology, and it was at the same time, you know, there was some, some really well-observed uh, behavioural stuff and and it was nicely topical and you know it was just fun it was fun more than anything so continuing from the enjoyment I had reading it then getting involved meeting Seth and, and designing the character of Bobby Pallet was has been a riot. Farrell now had the taste for comedy and blood because next up he played the suburban vampire in the comedy horror remake of Fright Night. 
For a man whose film choices have often avoided the supernatural, why did Colin feel the urge to sink a fang into this project? So for me, it was, it was ticking a box, though. I'm a film fan, and I grew up on The Lost Boys, and I grew up on Near Dark, and I grew up on Friday Night as well first when I was about 11. So the idea of getting to be part of this, I kind of didn't want to like it when I read the script, because I just knew that it would be walking in big shoes or stepping into a you know, deeply cast shadow. But, uh, but the script was different enough, and, and being Craig and knowing what he wanted to do with it, you know, I, I uh, couldn't say no. And with remakes being the biggest bankable trend right now, Colin definitely couldn't say no to starring in the reimagining of the 1990s sci-fi hit Total Recall. Things that I really did love the original. Um, I saw it recently, Total Recall. It's still great. I don't know, it, a lot of action. And again, uh, uh, I think Len and his team of artists have created a world that we haven't seen before. And you know, something that when I saw what they were going to do with it, I was just, yeah, my jaw dropped. And I said, well, I want to be part of that. His quick wit. Expletive-filled language and boisterous attitude has seen Colin Farrell star rise very quickly since the turn of the century. He's got that everyman demeanour mixed with his natural knack for acting and it's seen him slot into a cast or a film genre with ease and he shows no signs of slowing down. Stay with us here at Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and MNC.TV.